this is a recording. It's uh, Friday morning, uh, the 10th of June. We're sitting in a noisy coffee shop. I've got some people with me. Uh, hey. You can see the screen. Hey, Zoe's here. <laughs> Dan's here. Dean's here. Michelle. Michelle. Cindy. Cindy. And Cindy. Cindy is a man, by the way. Yeah. And you can see, <laughs> you can see that I've, uh, I've, with the blue, I've made some marks here. So what I'm trying to explain to them is where I have the number one. This is where the area where I ask questions. So I demarcate this area above the line for all the questions that I have. Does that make sense? Mm. Then here, number two, this is where I get the key words from the person. And I write down and I make notes on everything he says and this and that and whatever the case might be. Mm. Then, area three is where I get the answer that I expect. I, I know what the answer is yeah. going to be and, and what we're going to get up to. And then step number four that I don't oh. indicate very well here is I actually close. So what I'm trying to say to you, Dean, is before you can go from question one to question number two, if you didn't close, you wasted all your time. I, I don't want another desk. Please. Yeah. So he can move next to me, she can move next to me. What you actually mean by close is that you get a positive response from yes. the phone. Okay. Well, uh, here's an important question now from Dan. Mm -hmm. What I mean by closing is I get the person to acknowledge and say, I am with you, I understand that's my problem, I've agreed on it, everything is cool. If you can't do that, you've wasted your time. If you can't close the person here, You've just wasted your time. That's the short story. So, you'll see now with the hot buttons that I go through, I'm going to ask a question, the question I've decided to ask. That's why it's pre-printed for you guys. As a matter of fact, these answers I can also pre-print for you. <laughs> yeah, because that's where you have to get to. That's, that's where you have to get to. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, without fail. Yeah. Everyone with me so far? Yes. Okay. So are we ready to do the presentation? Okay, so I'm going to actually rub this out because I want all of this to be part of a stock market college presentation. Hardis van Pletsen, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to rub it out nicely and make sure everyone has their presentation packs. I'm going to change the color here to, um, to uh, um, black. This is so awesome. mm. And then I am going to present. So who's going to be my client? Dean. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Dean, you and I are now sitting together. I uh, know a bit more about you. We've socialized a bit. I understand about you, your company, your job. I've got these three pages here in what I call a little presentation pack. Mm -hmm. And I am going to show you what we do using these three pages. Brilliant. You with me so far? Let me explain to you the first page that I'm going to use. Please, I'm doing this on the recording. This is what I do in real life with every single client. I say to them, let me explain to you what I'm going to do on this page. Otherwise, people are looking at this page, they're looking at the printing on it, and they think, well, what is this? What is going to happen? So there must be an introduction to this page. My further introduction is I've got this grid on it. Uh, on this grid, there's uh, five numbers. I've put five numbers on the grid because I'm actually going to ask you five questions. There are the questions that we're going to discuss. All the answers you give me, I'm going to write down so we see what's important to you. That's the first reason why I'm going to write it down. The second reason why I'm going to write it down is so that neither you or I have to have a good memory. We can just look at this back again and it'll refresh our memory. And the third reason why I like using a grid is both you and I can keep track how far we are with this. Yeah. Everyone with me so far? So... What other salespeople that sell these stock market things do is they don't have a grid. So now they're sitting talking to the client and what often happens, I've seen it with salespeople that I go with, the salesperson either goes off track or at some point in time the client gets a bit frustrated and says to the guy, but so what is your purpose? Where are you going with this? What's your point? What, what, what is your no point? It, there's no guideline. So the salesperson's not really clear on what he needs to do, and the client's also not clear. <laughs> so the wonderful thing about this presentation pack, when you say to the guy, there's only three pages that you and I are going to work on, yeah. everything's cool. No one's confused. Yeah. Everyone's happy. Happy with it so far? Yes. So, Dean, 
The first question that I want to ask you is, have you ever traded the stock market? No, I haven't. Okay. Excellent. Explain to me why not. Um, too expensive. Okay. That's an interesting answer. What do you mean by too expensive? Uh, don't have the money to trade. Okay. No money to trade. Yeah. Okay. Dean, how much money do you think you need to trade the stock market? I'm not sure. I guess... You're not sure? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. So let me ask you then. <laughs> how much do you know about the stock market? Not that much. Not much. Okay. So, I want to summarize here at the bottom what you are telling me. And I want to make sure that I understand it correctly. So can you confirm if, if I've got it right or not? Okay, so let me put my summary. Right now, are you saying to me that you actually have a lack of knowledge on the stock market? Yes. Okay, so watch now. I'm going to write it here so that it's clear for people. In this area there, I asked a question. Everyone understand that? Am I right? Yes. In this area here, I wrote down all the keywords. Yes? Mm -hmm. Now, he has given me the answer that I know he has to give me. Mm -hmm. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to close him. Mm. Are you ready for the close? Yes. Okay. So, Dean, <laughs> let me... Now that I, I know you, you've agreed that you've got a lack of knowledge, are you saying to me that this lack of knowledge... This is keeping you away from the stock market. Yes. So that is your stumbling block. Yeah. And until you don't improve your knowledge, you will never be able to get into the stock market. Correct. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. okay. Did you see? I, I, I asked Sorry. him like three questions there mm. as part of my closing routine. Mm. Yes, ask me questions. Yeah, no, that's what I was going to ask. So you can elaborate, you know, you don't just get like lack of knowledge and you're like, okay, why would you be interested in You actually elaborate first just so that he clears up in his head that he really has a lack of knowledge and now we're moving on. Of course. So you elaborate on it a bit like a question or two or three questions. Exactly. That flow into it nicely. Yeah. If, if, he, if the client does not clearly understand in his own mind that he doesn't know enough about shares, why would he buy a course from us? Mm. <laughs> if he is not crystal clear that what's keeping him away from the stock market is the fact that he doesn't know enough. Why, why would he continue? Exactly. He'll be in his cupboard there for... He's going to pay the money. Well, he's not even going to buy it from you. You will see that with all my closing questions, and I want you to note that as we go along, I refer all the other steps back to, okay, you can't do any of this because you've got no money. So here comes the interesting thing. Someone with half a brain can ask questions, write down keywords, get to the answer. That part, you don't need any particular skill or intelligence for. Good people, the critical part, <laughs> where you need a bit of brains, is this part. How do I close the person to make him excited about this and say, yeah, I want to give money? Yeah, you just emphasize what you said. Correct. Yeah, okay. So you understand the closing yes. part. Okay, so now at this point, okay, so Dean, so... So, without knowledge, you're never going to make money from the stock market. True. Okay. Let's go to, <laughs> let's go to question number two. Uh, why are you interested in shares? To make more money for myself. Make more money. Okay. So, now comes two critical questions. Critical, critical questions that I do on this area here. Okay. So, Dean... Um, I know that you want to make money from shares, but what I want to know from you, and I'm going to write it here, I'm going to write the question, how much per month? What is the kind of money you would like to make from the stock market every single month? What is the amount of money that's going to change your life? Mm, it would have to cover my expenses, so say 20 grand. 20,000 rand per month. Yeah. Everyone there? So, can you see that I asked him how much money do you want to make every single month? Yes? Uh, please speak loudly. 
any questions you ask, comments you make, please speak as loudly as you can so that whoever listens to the video will get the benefit. Yes, ask. Your question was, why are you interested? Yes. So I do get sometimes, you tell me. Okay. Mm. All right. Sure. Um, okay. You guys watching the video, you've got to get your uh, brains together. Um, we're going to move off the point quickly. Sometimes I will ask someone, why are you interested in the stock market? And they will say to me, I'm not interested. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yes. The moment someone says, I'm not interested in the stock market, please, that answer you should expect. Mm -hmm. Because, yes. and I just want to tell you, if he says, I'm not interested, it's actually key words to tell you something else. Mm. Why are you not interested? No, no. Okay. Any, okay. Jeez, uh, we're going to go far off the point, but I think it's mm -hmm. maybe at an important point. Uh, I'll ask Dean. Dean, are you interested in soccer? Yes no. or no? Yeah, I am. No, no on a serious no. note, a personal question. Yeah, yeah. I want to know from you. Are you interested in soccer, yes or no? Yeah. You like soccer? Yeah. Genuinely? Yeah, I genuinely. Okay, are you interested in classical music? No, not as much. Okay. It's okay to say no, not at all. Okay. Uh, are you interested in uh, fly fishing? Not at all. <laughs> not at all? No. Okay. Now, did you see, uh, is there anyone else in the, uh, here that's interested in fly fishing? Uh, what's fly fishing? Try to be okay, what's fly fishing? <laughs> then clearly not Brian. Okay, so let me explain. Anyone, how can you be interested in fly fishing if you know nothing about it? How can you be interested in the stock market if you know nothing about it? Someone who's not interested in fly fishing, if you take him fly fishing, you explain about the fishing rod, how it works, they might become very interested. It's a new hobby. It's something that they'll change to do their life. So the key words here is, if someone says to you, I'm not interested in the stock market, what they're actually telling you is, I don't know anything about it. Because the moment they understand how much money they can make, then they'll be interested. So how you handle the question here is, um, Jane Ann, when you say to someone, why are you interested in the stock market? And they say, no. You change your question in the following way. You say to the person, okay, it's normal for you not to be interested. Let me ask the question differently. What would make you interested in the stock market? Change your words. Change your words. Mm -hmm. And anyone with half a brain, if you say to someone, what would make you interested in the stock market? Yes. What are they going to say? Money. 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 Then it brings you back to the point where you're going to say, okay, if you're interested in making money from shares, how much would you like to make per month? 